I'm Mark Wallace. Welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, where we are committed to help you create no matter what. Well, I'm in my little apartment in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm on week, I don't know, 10 or 11 of uh, the quarantine here. I haven't been able to go outside of this uh, hotel or this apartment in about a month or so now. And so um, I'm having to get a little bit creative about what I can do inside. But I have an exercise that you can do along with me inside your own house to understand the difference between distortion and compression and depth of field and all kinds of things that will really impact how you shoot scenic photography as well as portrait photography because these principles really matter. And so this is an exercise you can go do right along with me. So here's what you need to do this at home. All you need are just some objects. And so I have a uh, salt shaker and a cup and a bowl and a basket. The important thing is you just need things that are different sizes re relative to each other. So something a little bit smaller, something a little bit bigger. So you can compare the sizes of these things as you're taking photos. The other thing that you need is a zoom lens and any camera. So any camera that has a zoom lens. And so I'm gonna use my little uh, Sony a7 III with a kit lens. This is a 28 to 70. So something that you can zoom in and out with. So you can see this is just my little kit lens here, 28 to 70. So 24 to 70, 28 to 70, something like that. Um, you can use a wider or longer lens, but around this range is going to be sort of the sweet spot. Now, when you're doing this, I'm going to challenge you to take some photos along the way. I'm gonna be shooting video with this, so you can see in this video that I'm making right now how things are changing. And so what I'll be doing is I'm gonna be using this little uh, pop-out screen here, the live view. So I'll be looking at that if you're wondering what the heck it is that I'm looking at. It's my little live view screen. All right, so here's what we want to do. First, I want you to look and see the, the differences between the sizes of these objects relative to each other. So I'll get my little camera here. I'll start recording and you can see that they're pretty much, you know, they're normal things you would get in a kitchen, I guess. So what we want to do is we want to put these in order from the smallest thing, salt shaker, to the biggest thing on a table or some kind of surface. So that's what I'll do. So I'll take this salt shaker, I'll put it closest to the camera and I'll put the coffee cup, put the bowl, I'll put the basket down there. Let me just get a look and see if these are arranged properly here. And we're gonna start by using our widest setting. So we're gonna start with a uh, 28 millimeter setting. So this looks pretty good. So I'll just arrange these about like that. So these are sort of at a diagonally, a diagonal so I can see them. Okay, so I have my camera at 28 millimeters. So you set your camera to the widest uh, on your zoom lens, get your stuff set out. And so I'll start recording this. You want your stuff set up that you can see them like this. So left to right, you can see everything in the lens. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna observe what happens when we move closer and farther away from our subjects with our camera set to its widest setting. So 28 millimeters, 24, whatever the widest, the zoomed, most zoomed out your lens has. So do that. And then what I want you to do is to physically walk closer to your items and farther away and take pictures along the way and observe a few things. Look at how the objects are in relation to each other. So look at this salt shaker right here. So I've got my salt shaker and my basket. Look at how they are uh, in relation to each other as far as their size is concerned. And then as I walk closer, get closer to this salt shaker, notice that the salt shaker is getting much, much larger than the basket in the background. The things in the background are sort of going away. You can also notice that the focus is changing. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but the thing that's important to notice is the thing in the front is getting much, much larger. The things in the back are getting sort of small. And then when we walk away, things look like they're more in proportion to each other. And so that's what happens when you walk closer to things. The things in the foreground become much, much larger than the things in the background. And so you can use this effect to exaggerate the foreground and bring us into the subject. So when we're shooting street photography or scenic photos or anything with the wide angle lens, we wanna have what's called foreground interest, something that brings us into the story because things that are in the front really become large. Now, normally using a wide angle lens for portraiture is something that we avoid because of that. 
If you get too close to somebody, their nose gets really big, their ears get really small, everything gets out of whack, and we have something that looks unnatural. So let's contrast that to what happens when we stand back and we zoom in. Again, we're paying attention to how things are in relation to each other and their sizes in relationship to each other. So okay, so I'm gonna go back here again. I'll start recording. Now I'm going to zoom in and out. All right, I'm at 28 millimeters. Now I'm going to zoom in. Notice that everything becomes larger and smaller in relation to each other the same. So they're all proportionally the same and I zoom in and zoom out. That foreground thing is not getting much larger than the background thing. They're all staying consistent. That's because our camera is not moving closer to the object, we're just optically getting closer. So all of those proportions stay the same. And that is really good if you wanna shoot a portrait and you wanna make sure that everybody looks good, the better thing to do instead of getting really close is to back up and zoom in. That even is important if you have an iPhone or an Android and you're taking a picture of several lenses. One of those is a zoom in lens and one of those is a normal lens. Use the, the 2X or whatever lens that gets you closer and stand back, you'll get more pleasing results. All right, we also have to understand one other thing that's called compression. So I want you to look as I'm filming this. So look way in the background in this image here and you can see the chair and the door in the very back. So this, this chair or this door of the closet back there. So notice what happens when I zoom in. Notice that it looks like it's getting closer to the salt shaker. So when I zoom out, it looks like it's farther away. When I zoom in, it looks like it's getting closer. In fact, all these objects look like they're getting closer together. That is called compression. So when you use a long lens and you have things in the distance, it brings that closer to the thing in the foreground. It smashes things together. It compresses them as opposed to, watch what happens when we use a wide angle lens and we walk closer. So again, notice that background closet and the chair. So when I walk closer to my salt shaker, notice that the background A is going out of focus, but it also looks like it's getting farther away. See, everything is cool. But as I get closer and closer, oh, that closet looks like it's way far away. Again, that's distortion. And so that principle has impacts in the studio and on location because it helps us either clean things up or exaggerate things. So when you're shooting scenic photos, remember we talked about bringing things into the frame by using foreground interest with a wide angle lens? Well, the opposite is true with a long lens when you zoom in. So for example, I was out somewhere in the uh, Andes Mountains and I had this sort of big plane when I shot the first shot with a wide angle lens, you could see that we have way too much foreground interest and the thing that I care about or the mountains way in the background, you can't even see them, they're just a little dot. So when I use a long lens, zoom in, those mountains become much more pronounced and the foreground interest becomes less pronounced and I can really focus on the thing that I want. But more importantly, I can use that compression to take things like mountain ranges and instead of showing one mountain with a bunch of ranges behind that go out of you know, into nothingness because they're too small using a wide angle lens, by using a long lens and zooming in, I can take all of those mountains and compress them, put them together, and we get a ridge after a ridge after a ridge after a ridge, and it's much more pleasing. So when you're thinking about scenic photography, think about that. Do you wanna exaggerate something in the foreground and the background is able to just go away? Or is it more important to take everything and smash it together? That will help you understand if you should use a long lens or a wide lens. The same thing is true if you're doing uh, portrait photography. Do you wanna do something like street portraiture where you want to show the environment and the things that are happening around people and so you're using a wide angle lens to show foreground interest in stuff that's happening on the street with people in that situation or an environmental portrait where you have somebody in their kitchen or in their situation in a restaurant cooking, whatever, using sort of a wide angle lens or do you wanna eliminate all the distractions zoom in, compress everything, and get a beautiful picture, well then you use a long lens, you zoom in. There's one other thing you probably noticed in these videos, and that is that the focus doesn't remain constant. Things become uh, less in focus in the background, that's called bokeh, it's called something uh, called shallow depth of field. How much is in focus is called depth of field. 
We don't have time to go in that, into that in this video, but I have done a deep dive several times actually on Adorama TV. So I've linked to those videos in the description of this video so you can understand what depth of field, uh, what happens with depth of field when you zoom in and out, when you use long lenses, when you get close and far away, because all of that changes as well. All right, try this at home. Get a few objects, get some baskets and cups and salt shakers and start trying this. See with your own eyes what happens to the dis uh, compression and the distortion and the depth of field and all of that stuff. Try different settings on your camera, small apertures and wide apertures and really wide lenses and really long lenses. Get far away, zoom in, get really super close. Try it all and you're gonna start to see these relationships very, very clearly. Well, thanks so much. I hope this helps you out. This is a fun little exercise you can do at home. So I want you to try it out and then post what you have created and what you have learned on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on all of your social, and then tag Adorama and make sure you use the hashtag create no matter what so we can see what you've created. Thanks again for joining me and I will see you again next time.